They say they are on a mission of reviving or revival following the election of new leaders in July. And the league is turning 79 years today. And it's often been criticized for lacking relevance and a solid voice in the political landscape. Young people in South Africa are facing challenges ranging from unemployment, poverty and inequality and also lack of tertiary education. The current leadership has promised it will work to transform the country's economy and to ensure the youth are well represented in parliament. To discuss this further on the Youth, uh, youth League's 79th birthday, we're joined by Ruben Mathaloha. He is the former ANC Youth League Deputy President. Ruben, thank you so much for your time. Just reflecting uh, during your tenure at the ANC Youth League and what it is that had kept the organization or its uh, um, subsidiary, so to speak, relevant. Good afternoon, Cindy, and good afternoon to the viewers. Well, the, the, throughout the history of the Youth League, it has gone through a, a number of uh, challenges. Um, you know, in, uh, when uh, Anton Lembere died, uh, there was a period in which uh, there was a lull in the, in the Youth League. And even at the time when the, the leaders of the Youth League were uh, arrested, faced the prison trial, and the, the Youth League was weakened. But uh, the Youth League has got uh, the capacity to regenerate and recreate itself. And I think that uh, the recent conference of the Youth League gives it uh, another chance to uh, reposition itself and assume the center stage of mobilizing young people behind the vision and vision of the ANC but also to articulate the interest of, of, of young people. So the, the Youth League has got to exist within and amongst the young people. The Youth League has got to have an umbilical court with the lives of young people. The Youth League has got to be found at the center of championing the interest of young people and also the communities in which they live. When young people uh, have got challenges of uh, education, the ANC Youth League must be there to address those issues. When there are issues of development in communities, the ANC Youth League must be found there. At the moment, unemployment among the youth stands at around 70%. The ANC Youth League must be seen to be articulating solutions that can resolve some of these challenges that young people are facing. So, yeah, if, if, if you're um, still saying, uh, futuristically speaking, that the ANC Youth League ought to be seen uh, as the voice of the youth and also uh, the uh, solution bearer to the challenges that young people face. In other words, you're indirectly saying that that is not the case. This is not the image of the ANC Youth League at current, that they are devoid uh, or rather um, you know, disconnected with the youth and not necessarily understanding the challenges. Uh, the, the, sub, the subset of the point I'm attempting to make is that uh, over the past uh, uh, seven to ten years, there has been uh, some bit of challenges uh, within the Youth League, which uh, the Youth League was disbanded, disbanded, and, and, and all of that. And uh, we've just, you know, moved ahead of the curve in relation to that situation. And therefore, the, the Youth League now has regained its voice uh, given the recent Congress that it has had. So the the point I'm making is that I think the the conference that the Youth League has just emerged out of uh, will give it another fighting chance that will recenter the Youth League uh, within and amongst young people. Yeah, and in hindsight, um, what had the results uh, that had given birth to the economic freedom fighters and uh, that the expulsion of the ANC Youth League at the time when Julius Malem um, had been part of uh, the executive committee, do you think that had also given a blow to the ANC Youth League's um, posture and, and, and also perception of what it actually stands for? The radicalism doesn't seem to be there. It seems to be very subdued in a way and not uh, enjoying the autonomy that the, the organization uh, provides? Well, the Youth League must remain a critical body of opinion within the ANC, and young people must be allowed to think freely. Young people must be allowed to make mistakes. Young people need to be provided guidance and, and leadership. So I think uh, the Youth League must continue to remain a necessary irritation to the to, to the ANC and and, and of course uh, to um, uh, 
power structures that are there that lead to resolve the contradictions and challenges that young people are facing. Yeah, but how influential, maybe Ruben, if you can give us a sense of uh, tangible, be it um, legislation, maybe what comes to mind is the fact that uh, often young people who um, enter the, the job market for the first time are required to have a certain level of experience or even qualification that they're not necessarily roped in uh, for in-house training. I think that uh, that is something that comes to mind that the Youth League had been influential in. What else is it that is noteworthy to talk about the ANC Youth League in recent years? The, the, the whole agenda of um, economic transformation has been recentered by, by the ANC Youth League. In uh, 2001, <clears throat> the, the Youth League launched a campaign called the um, Jobs for Youth campaign, and it engaged the um, uh, different industry players, the banks, the mines, um, and all of that, to ensure that uh, young people are given uh, opportunities. Uh, in this case, for instance, your learnerships and so on, uh, became part of the uh, basket of interventions that government even uh, considered. Uh, you know about the Umsobongo Youth Fund, um, uh, which then later matched with the Youth Commission to establish the NYDA. Um, and of course, uh, the creation of uh, uh, institutional structures within government, um, youth units uh, in provinces will have uh, youth development uh, structures in local government, will have similar structures, which are focused mainly on championing and, and uh, programs that deal with um, um, uh, challenges that young people are facing at the local level. Uh, so as I say, <laughs> the, the current Youth League um, has got to define the, its, its mission and, and pursue and achieve it. Um, the ground has been laid by previous generations like our, our generation. And I think that um, the, they've got a fighting chance given the fact that they at the moment they've regained their independence. Yeah, let, let's talk about policymakers and maybe where uh, the young people as a designated group ought to locate itself. Do you think that there needs to be a separate ministry that looks particularly at the challenges of young people that is run for youth, by youth, uh, and therefore deal with these challenges that face young people? Well, uh... Being youth is a transient, it's a transient state. <laughs> uh, you can't be a youth forever. But uh, if you look at challenges that young people are facing, they, they cut across uh, various government uh, departments. Um, so the, the situation of the NYDA and of course serving a minister in the presidency that looks at coordinating um, all these interventions that government has got to do at, in various departments. I think it, um, for me, it's a sufficient uh, institutional fr framework um, as it were. <clears throat> All right, Ruben, I was going to say, maybe you also want to add, just to entice the youth a little bit more, add a, a little bit more theatrics, bells and balloons, who knows, maybe include a, an adjustable stage as well for the 79th uh, celebrations of the ANC Youth League. Ruben, we're going to uh, leave it there. That's, that's former that's... Deputy President of the NC Youth League, <laughs> Ruben Masaloha, uh, speaking to us from Kamil River in Mpumalanga as the organization celebrates or marks its 79th birthday.